Fasten all seat belts. Seal all entrances and exits. Close all shops in the mall. Cancel the three-ring circus. Secure all animals in the zoo. Nothing you have ever witnessed will prepare you for the absolute carnage you're about to witness. It's Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. It's time to take an inside look at those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level. Get ready to Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond, connecting you to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond. Today on Thrive Loud, we have a therapist, speaker, and author who helps people strive to live their lives in accordance with their values. She is the author of Sunny Side Up and Name Your Story. There's other titles of those, but those are the fast version of me reading it. Dr. Lauren Cook is with us today on Thrive Loud. How are you today, Dr. Lauren Cook? I am doing amazing, Lou. I'm so excited to be here. I love the work that you do. So thank you for that awesome intro. I'm glad we get to spend some time together. Dr. Lauren Cook is part of our continuing program of elevating the brilliant minds of women from all these amazing people we've connected with here in Clubhouse. And uh, I I want to kind of give our listeners a little bit of the the crazy work that you do in this world, this magical stuff that you do. Um, Can you share with the listeners maybe a little bit about how this became your gig? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm a practicing therapist here in SoCal, and I am so passionate about helping millennial women in particular, people in their 20s, 30s, through those huge life transitions that we tend to go through in those years. So everything from the professional, graduating, starting a career, whether that's entrepreneurship or corporate or something else, uh, and all the personal changes that come too, right? Dating, potentially getting married, relationships not always working out, breakups, starting a family, all those big milestones. I love supporting women through those seasons. So that's a little bit about the work that I do. And then I used to travel as a speaker on the road all the time, but obviously that's transitioned into all virtual, but I love getting to speak as well. It's a whole different way of connecting with people outside of the therapy room. So that's a little bit of of my life in a nutshell. Lauren, I want to ask this question because um, it, we're right now at recording this, we're literally one year from the, you know, we've been in this virus pandemic, whatever, the, whenever they officially named it a virus, mm-hmm. a, a global pandemic. And it's been a really hard year for a lot of people upstairs, not only in their lungs and all the issues that COVID has brought, but a lot of stress. Um, one, I wanted to ask you, has it been a busy year for you? <laughs> yeah, that would be an understatement, Lou. <laughs> And, and, and I, I'm not going to go through all the, the, the personal individual things. Those are uh, what I call doctor patient privilege or patient doctor privilege. But I really want to understand, I guess, some of the trends and things that you've had to see over this last year. And Mm -hmm. maybe you could share with the listeners, what's the most common pain point going on after, you know, and maybe, maybe there's different windows over time that it might've changed from initial shock to where we've been over this long We'll call it, I guess at this point, we are all just fatigued on so many levels. Yeah, we're, we're at burnout level. You know, it's really fascinating to me because what I saw was that depression went through the roof the first half of the pandemic, right? People feeling really hopeless. What's the point? Uh, I was really seeing my clients struggle. Interestingly, I saw my clients with anxiety actually have a decrease in anxiety at first because here we're getting to stay home, which is what every anxious person often, if given their way, would want to do, right? Let me cancel (laughs) all my plans so I can stay home and that feels nice. Well, wish came true. Now, as we're starting to open up, I'm seeing an opposite effect. Depression is starting to lift for a lot of folks because we're starting to finally have some hopefulness again. But my anxious clients, they're really starting to have their anxiety creep back up because they know it's time to face the music, right? Starting to see each other again, whether it's health anxiety or social anxiety, we're having to actually expose ourselves to what gives us anxiety. And so kind of an opposite effect that I'm seeing happen. Lauren, are you familiar with uh, Kim and Penn Holderness? Do you know who I am? Oh, I'm going to disappoint you. I'm not. I'm sorry. So I'm going to, I'm going to send you some links and you'll get to know this. The Holderness family 
do the mm-hmm. amazing song parody videos. And oh yes. yes, I think I know. So they've done the you know in my Christmas jammies originally, yes. and they've done all and almost every other day in COVID they came up with one, and they just came up with one because Penn um, just got his first vaccination, so he's all excited about it. But he mentions that his wife Kim, who's naturally an introvert, was a little concerned about getting back and going out. Mm-hmm. And as you said that, I just looked at that and like that has definitely happened. Talk about maybe how you're helping people with this. This is, this is a real issue, like really re-entry, if you would, because in different states at different stages, people are just either fed up and they can't wait to go back. And then there are some that are really still hesitant, even very fearful of the virus. Yeah, re-entry is the perfect word for it. Word for it. So I'm a big proponent of what's called exposure therapy, which in essence is exposing ourselves to the things we're afraid of and learning we can survive through it, right? So if somebody has social anxiety, for example, right, they're going to want to cancel those plans, stay home, and go on a Netflix binge. The exposure is, hey, send that text to that friend. Send that cold call to a friend and ask them how they're doing. We gradually build our way up. And over time, we see that our anxiety might spike up at first, but we can live through it. And that anxiety curve goes lower and lower each time. But the problem with anxiety is we want to avoid. And every time we avoid, it actually reinforces the anxiety, even though momentarily it may feel really good to get out of it, right? To cancel those plans. So exposure, we got to just face it. We got to jump in the metaphorical diving pool, if you will. And we're going to see that we can actually swim through it. You and I met in Clubhouse. Yes, we did. And, and I believe, and, and I, I can't remember if this was our initial meeting room, but I learned in a room that I was in, which I think you were in too, that the medium was incredibly beneficial for therapists because here you had a voice and other people to listen to. And needless to say, there have been many rooms that have been geared in the Clubhouse Club towards you guys having a voice to kind of speak and vent and talk about that. Have you been (laughs) using it in that regard? I'm just curious, you personally. A bit. bit. It's been really nice to find community with other therapists for sure, you know, because, and something I'm so passionate about with reducing the stigma and why I love Clubhouse is that I think it really gives an opportunity for therapists for us to humanize ourselves in a way that you don't even get with Instagram, you know, to realize we're real people, we're doing real work. And I think that's a great way for people to know kind of what happens behind the closed door of a therapy room. So I really hope that it's making therapy more accessible for people and a whole lot less scary. That's a big goal I have. Let's spin this to something you brought up right at the top of the show, because you and I uh, both sit in the same camp. We are both speakers and we've been doing a lot of virtual speaking, but we have not done as much in-person speaking. Mm -hmm. One, can you wait to go back and be in front of a crowd again? (sighs) I am super pumped. I'm actually, I've got a gig in Louisiana on Thursday. It's oh, my go. first one. In a, well, I did one in October in Orange County, but uh, it's been few and far between, right? Whereas before we were on the road all the time. I think for me, there has to be a happy medium. Like, I'm not going to lie with you, Lou. And I'm really curious your thought on this. It's been nice to not be on the road quite so much. Uh, So I feel like there's got to be a balance uh, because it's really made me realize through the pandemic how much I value that time with my family, being home with my husband. I don't want to give that up again, especially when, when you could do an hour gig, you know, on Zoom in your living room versus give up a whole weekend to travel. It's a little harder sell for me. I don't know about you. I think, okay, so the beginning of 2020 and the first seven weeks of the year, I think I was in seven or eight different cities. I mean, I remembered oh, wow. like literally, you know, forgetting the first week of New Year's Eve week or New Year's week, all the way through to the, to the right, right after President's week, I was everywhere. And, and, and in some places more than once, I remembered, I was like, I think I was in Orlando twice. And, <laughs> And I was tired, but I was excited. Financially, I was excited. And also the Mm -hmm. work you do is great. You know, I get motivated. I am a natural extrovert, probably like you, it looks like. Uh, Is that true? Are you you a natural extrovert or? I think I put on a good face, but I'm an extrovert introvert, actually. (laughs) Gotcha. It's probably the therapy side in me. Uh, so, so So I miss that energy that you cannot replace through this little glass 
screen that we have between us Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, and, and make it clear having a podcast is a great way to connect with people. And I've had that for a long time. So I think I could not imagine how many more episodes of podcasting we would do in the last year. But what Mm -hmm. I will tell you, Lauren, is that it's the energy that I miss the most. It's that going out there and hearing people feel like, "Uh uh-huh, I get that. Getting those aha moments, those head nods, um, that one connection to somebody that, that almost becomes viral inside, pun intended, um, inside <laughs> of, of a speaking place because you really feel that energy. Do you get that too? Notice this is called um, interview ping pong uh, listeners. We're just <laughs> knocking it back and forth. And <laughs> I definitely do. I really do. And, you know, one of my favorite things, I like to channel my inner Ellen a little bit. Like I love putting music on in a room before I speak and dancing around. Like I love to feel that energy in the room. I am that speaker that tries to meet as many people in the audience before I get on stage as I possibly can. I'm never going to be that speaker that's hiding back, not hiding, but you know, hanging out backstage too cool for school. I want to know who I'm spending time with. And so that I do miss. I really do miss that. Can you share with our listeners, name your story, the premise behind it. And um, as you would like to say, why it matters. Yeah, absolutely. So I have a whole back history with this. So, and let me give it to you condensed. So when I was in college, I really wanted to become an author. I reached out to Gretchen Rubin. You know, she's the author of the happiness project, 18 years old, like from my dorm room bunk bed at UCLA and was like, I want to write a teen edition of the happiness project with you. And she was like, uh, no, thank you. (laughs) And so I'm like, okay, well, I'll write my own book. And so I built this whole brand about happiness called the sunny girl. I would wear a yellow dress. I now have like 20 yellow dresses in my closet. I don't know what to do with. Uh, And I would travel around speaking about happiness and it was great, but I would really see in so many audience members faces that almost their face just fall or they couldn't connect to the message. And I think that's why we're seeing such a hashtag toxic positivity movement right now is because we've been told this narrative of like, just be happy, choose happy. Like you can control that. And, you know, I, I I was seeing so many people get disconnected and say to me, Lauren, I'm having trouble just being okay. Like, let alone being happy. And so that's when my work really evolved to, okay, I want to shift the conversation to mental health and really talking about the totality of human experience, not just when we feel joy. And so that was a big shift for me. And honestly, my work has felt much more vulnerable and grounded and connected because I'm really trying to show up as a real flawed human being, you know, that's not just portraying a message of happiness. With a lot of yellow dresses. Yeah. <laughs> With a lot of yellow dresses. <laughs> We're going to make sure we put that in the cover art. Note to self, to team. I love asking <laughs> people in your shoes this question. And I am so curious to know where this goes. Uh, we, on most days, are kicking on all cylinders like you. You're, you're figuring out how to make your business thrive. You're been, you've had a very busy year and obviously finding other ways to connect, even though you couldn't be on stages. But obviously on those other days, as you know, lots of people are, have been having trouble thriving. When you, Dr. Lauren Cook, are off your game, what practice do you seek or individual do you seek out to get yourself back on the thriving track? Ooh, that is a great question. I love that. So, okay, Lou, I, before I answer this, I have to ask, are you into the Enneagram at all? Into the what? The Enneagram. Enneagram. No. Oh, okay. I'm going to send this to you. So the Enneagram is basically a personality assessment. For me, it was life-changing. Essentially for your listeners who are tuning in, I'm an Enneagram three, which means I'm an achiever. I'm a doer, which means when I'm moving into an unhealthy state, I can push myself into the workaholic place very quickly. (laughs) Um, I definitely became overly productive during the pandemic, I would say. And so there's two things I really do. One is having intentional time with my husband, with my friends, making sure I'm having conversations that aren't revolving around work. And then two, it's been so important for me to get outside every day to get sun on my face. I got blood work done recently, which I really recommend to everybody after this year of being inside, found out my vitamin D levels were exceedingly low. And I found that, you know, just spending 30 minutes in the sun, getting a walk each day, getting exercise, huge for me and my mental health. So those are my two things that I recommend. I like it. 
Let's do the admin part of the show, Dr. Lauren Cook. Share with the listeners all the places people can find you. Books, websites, URLs, everything we need to know. Where do we find all you? That You're fun everywhere. Stuff. We will yeah. put it in the show notes, but they will get more engagement when they hear it directly from you. Oh, well, I'm super pumped because I'm launching a course this May all about how to help people, women in particular, make values-based grounded life decisions, especially for those major life transitions. So the course is called Know Your Why, Find Your Way. So stay tuned for that. Sign up for the wait list for that. Also, I'm really active on Instagram. That's where you can find me the most. I'm at Dr. Lauren Cook and I'm on TikTok and Clubhouse at Dr. Lauren Cook as well. Uh, Books are on Amazon if anybody wants that. And yes, let's talk about speaking. If anybody is looking for a virtual speaker, um, go to my website at drlaurencook.com. And I would love to get that ball rolling with people. Dr. Lauren Cook, you ready to go down Fun Street here on Thrive Loud? Oh, I'm, I'm in the driver's seat here for this. Let's do it. Okay. Can you share with the listeners what you shared with me at the top of the show, what your favorite movie is of all time? <laughs> So I am living out my dreams right now because I'm a 90s kid. I just turned 30 last month. And so I grew up watching Father of the Bride my whole life. Now, second version, right? Like Steve Martin, Martin Short. Right. Uh, love, love, love that movie. And it's set in San Marino, right? And so my whole life growing up in SoCal, I'm like, I want to move to San Marino. Now, I did not move exactly to San Marino. I'm in the Pasadena area. San Marino is like the direction we're hoping to go, Lou, but <laughs> that's going to take some time if you've seen real estate in San Marino. Uh, but I, I, yeah, I'm living the dream. So Father the Bride is my movie for the win, part one and two. Gotcha. That and the blue Armani suit, which is always my favorite <laughs> one in that old movie. Exactly. Uh, it's one of the greatest reasons on why you do not chinch on the parking attendance at a home <laughs> way. You know it well. I appreciate that. Uh, permission to do the, the speed round of Fun Street with me here. You ready to rock and roll? Let me Yeah, share. I'll Let try me... and hang. Okay, here's how it works. I'm going to ask you something. I want the first thing that comes to your mind. I want things that these, these are things that make you feel good, lift you up, motivate you, make you thrive. At least most of this the This is questions. so Freudian. It is sort of. I feel very good. Here I am dealing with the professional and the rookie on the other side showing up. Okay. <laughs> A song that you love to hear or that pumps you up? Oh, man. Okay. Anything Broadway. Like, I love the energy of Broadway. So I'm going to say anything from Kinky Boots. Oh, okay. Good show. Yeah. Favorite food that's not a dessert? <laughs> well, I would only eat dessert if I could. <laughs> that's why I have to give the clarification on that question. Yes. Um, Mini corn dogs. I know that is so not the, a good answer, but that sounds good right now. I'm real hungry, to be honest with you. <laughs> A favorite dessert. <laughs> oh, okay. Susie Cakes. Have you had Susie Cakes? Yeah. Those are yeah. Good. Hands down. An activity you wish you did more of? Play tennis. I haven't done that in a year and I love playing tennis. An activity you wish you did less of? Oh, watching Netflix. <laughs> if I could snap my fingers, Dr. Lauren, and I, you can go anywhere in the world. Where are you? Oh, I'm in Costa Rica playing with the monkeys or watching the monkeys. That's my favorite place in the world. Dr. Lauren Cook, rock star, awesome individual. Name your story. She's got the sunshine. She wears a lot of, she's got a lot of yellow dresses that she wants to get on stage and put on and, and go wear. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on Thrive Loud. It's spectacular connecting with you here today. Continue doing what you're doing and helping so many people. It's awesome. Oh, you too, Lou. This has been really fun. Thanks for making my Monday. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep thriving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Head on over to Spotify, Good Pods, or wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe and listen to all of our incredible episodes. Follow Lou at Thrive Loud everywhere on social media and head on over to thriveloud.com to connect directly to Lou and learn how you and your business can thrive loud too. Thanks for listening.